Last video, I mentioned that Shanks' throne is in jeopardy. Now, I know a lot of you people were worried by that, and I'm sure a lot of Shanks fans and a lot of One Piece fans will have their hearts broken by this video, but I do believe that Oda has been building this up for some time now, and Post Wano is going to be the start of the throne wars. Stay tuned. Can it be your faith in For a while now, I've been building up this Shanks storyline centered around Shanks and Blackbeard's ultimate um, battle, which is going to be happening pretty soon. I'm almost certain it's going to happen now. But just to give you guys a little background story. So I've mentioned that Shanks learned the most dangerous secret in the world. And that secret is centered around the fact that Blackbeard and Zebek are in cahoots with each other. Now, if you guys want more details on Shanks and Blackbeard and Zebek and Shanks being the holder of the last road poneglyph, Shanks being the one that is the maintainer and the preserver of balance within the world and the One Piece structure, with all the events that Shanks has been involved with, uh, intervening in Marineford, Shanks intervening with Ace, uh, uh, with Ace and Blackbeard, Shanks just being there whenever there needs to be an intervention. Shanks has always played that role in the story, and when it comes to Blackbeard, Blackbeard seems to be the ultimate antagonist towards the balance of the world with his chaos and his behavior. Therefore, with what we have going on and with what I mentioned in my last video with how Law and Kid have changed the world and destroyed the structure of the old regime, it is not crazy to think that Shanks is going to be the final pin that drops that ultimately shakes the world and changes everything around it. And we're going to start with exactly what I mentioned last video. So if all the Yonko are down, Big Mom, Kaido, they're down, they're part of the old regime, the worst generation includes Blackbeard, includes the Supernova, the Shichibukai are down, the world government is moving, SSG is a factor now, and with post Wano, we know we're going to get the throne wars, we're going to get a war that the world has never seen before. What is the one person that could keep the balance going while he is still alive, while he is still kicking, while he is still active? Of course it's Shanks, but who's the one person that could interfere with that? Who is the one person that I literally just mentioned that is the antithesis of balance in the world. That is Blackbeard. And what I believe is going to happen is that there is going to be a news report very similar to Baltigo and the revolutionaries and how they said that Blackbeard had defeated the revolutionaries and stolen the main base of Baltigo and forced Dragon to escape. I think we're gonna get a very similar headline which says, Shanks defeated in battle. And what people may think I'm saying is that Shanks is going to die. No, no, no. I don't think Shanks is going to die because we know the nature of these stories. We know the nature of Big News Morgans and his cap in the media, Luffy's the fifth Yonko, all kinds of different things like that. So what we're going to get here is we're going to get a news report. Luffy is going to read this news report. Shanks has been defeated in battle to Blackbeard. Luffy is going to be outraged. But Kid, Law, Hawkins, Apu, Aroge, Capone, all of these guys are going to see this newspaper and the first thing they're going to do is saying, Oh, the world is up for the taking. Kaido and Big Mom are out. Shanks is out. The Yonko are done. Oh, guess what? I'm out of here. Kids are going to be like, I'm out of here. Shanks' territories? Yeah, that's all me. That's all me. It's my time. It's my time to shine. Lord's going to be like, it might be my time. You know Capone's going to say it's his time. You know Arose is going to say the same thing. So that's going to trigger the supernova and the worst generation to finally start their new great pirate era. And we know Blackbeard is going to be the dominant force. We already know Blackbeard is going to move. Blackbeard is going to be the one to usher that great pirate era. So where is it going to happen? We all foreshadowed, we all believe that Blackbeard is going to Alabasta because he believes that there is a hint to Pluton in Alabasta. Now this is going all the way back to Crocodile and Robin and how Robin read that Poneglyph. Now I don't think Robin told Crocodile the truth, which means it's possible that Crocodile is working with Blackbeard. This is another theory that we've all had before, that Blackbeard and Crocodile will be working together and Crocodile will become the new underworld emperor in place of Doflamingo. He would share the secret of what he believes is going to be Pluton in Alabasta. Blackbeard goes to Alabasta. Shanks, the one who talked to the girls, say, and warned them of a pirate who we believe is Blackbeard because of his ties to Zebek. Again, if you guys want to get this storyline and you want to get the full picture of what I'm saying, go back and watch my Shanks videos. I'm going to call it the Shanks Files. I have a lot of them. They're all connected. You will get the full picture of what I'm talking about if you watch those videos. We go there. 
Shanks meets up with Blackbeard in order to maintain the balance of the world because I do believe Shanks knows a lot of things that he has not mentioned yet, specifically with the Gummo Gummo no Mi, specifically with the fourth row Poneglyph, specifically of the location of Raftail, the secret of the world. I think Shanks knows all of these things. They have a clash off screen. He loses, allegedly, because Blackbeard needs to be the final antagonist that Luffy fights, or at least it's either him or Emu. And as a result of that, it is reported across the world that Blackbeard has defeated Shanks. Now, will he get Pluton? That remains to be seen. But I think Shanks will escape. I think Shanks will travel to Elbaf because one could say, well, where is Elbaf? Is Elbaf confirmed to be in the New World? Maybe it's something I missed, but I would be surprised if it's in the New World. I actually think Elbaf is in the Grand Line, mainly just because of Little Garden, what we saw with Little Garden with Dory and Bragi. It's a, it, it's a kind of a hint that Elbaf actually might be in the Grand Line instead of the New World, where there is the Big Mom thing as well. You really never know with these things. Either way, Shanks escapes to Elbaf. All of a sudden, we have a storyline in which Shanks gets a message to Luffy saying, meet me at Elbaf. There's some things I need to tell you. I'm going to need you to defeat Blackbeard. Here's why. Here's the fourth row Poneglyph. I need you to get there before Blackbeard does, because if Blackbeard gets this information, it could be the end of us all. And this would tie into Shanks's role as a preserver, as a keeper of balance, because at the end of the day, it would be shocking if Shanks dies without speaking to Luffy and at least pushing him on his journey because i feel like shanks is ultimately gonna give luffy that extra jetpack fuel to go towards the one piece learn the secret of the world make a decision and then confront blackbeard and ultimately confront the world government because luffy is a free moral agent so he kind of does what he wants but i feel like if shanks says something to him luffy might actually go in that direction but this is what i'm saying here the trigger for all of this is shanks defeat shanks has to be defeated in order to trigger the race for the territories, in order to trigger the freedom of the supernova to believe that this is their time, this is their era. There is no one immovable force out there that can stop us outside of Luffy and Blackbeard. And for the most part, they know Luffy's not really gonna try and fight them, so they'd only have to worry about Blackbeard so they can get their own territories because I'm sure they think, oh yeah, we can fight Cade, we can fight Law, all this other stuff. They're gonna think that way. So that's what's going to trigger the events of post Wano to make it the crazy throne wars that we all believe it's going to be. It makes a lot of sense because then now that we have the supernova running wild, we have the supernova running crazy. We have Luffy going to Elbaf to meet Shanks, which is tying in with the plot line of maybe Big Mom's going to get back up because Big Mom still wants to know about the One Piece. So maybe Big Mom goes to Elbaf. Then we have that whole plot arc. We have that whole plot arc as well. So we have SSG versus the Supernova versus the worst generation. We also have everyone else running after the Shichibukai, Boa Hancock, um, Buggy, um, uh, Weevil, you know, all of these characters, everyone's fighting. Everyone's trying to capture somebody. Then you have the Admirals, you have uh, Fujitora and Green Bull. This is what's going to start the worldwide conflict. And, not, and let's not forget, there could be an internal conflict within the government as well. So something has to be the trigger. And what better character in the story for it to be the one man that has always been seen trying to keep everything together? To me, guys, I'm sorry, it has to be Shanks. Shanks has to be the sacrifice to trigger the throne wars, the post Wano arc that will give us the greatest war that Oda has said we're going to ever see and it's going to make Marineford look cute. If you have multiple battles and multiple wars in different locations, that would make Marineford look cute, wouldn't it? Especially major battles. Imagine you got um, Opu fighting a rose somewhere. You got Hawkins fighting law again somewhere like all these things, all these grandiose events that need to happen needs to start with a trigger. It's like if you go back to World War II events, you know, with the Archduke Ferdinand, and that was the one thing that triggered World War II. Like, the, everything starts with a trigger. Everything starts with a trigger. Now, I know Shanks fans and One Piece fans may not be happy about this. Oh, why would Shanks be defeated off screen? We're not going to get Blackbeard versus Shanks. Think about what we got with Ace and Blackbeard, guys. We did get a chapter, but that was a flashback chapter. Shanks versus blackbeard is going to be a fight that may not blow up it may not be the most big and grandiose thing we we like to see but remember what odin uh remember what uh oda did with kaido and odin as well all these big battles and events remember blackbeard versus marco the payback war aokiji versus akainu oda has done this before for the sake of a narrative and i think this is going to be one of those cases where oda uses shanks's storyline versus blackbeard 
as a sake for a narrative to push forward the plot and to really push towards the end of the series, to push towards Elbath, to push towards all the destiny that is surrounded by Joy Boy, because if Joy Boy is gonna bring the dawn of the world, this chaos that's going on, Wano's gonna be the epicenter of it, something's gonna trigger it, so Wano's gonna be the home base, because everywhere else is gonna be at war, and Wano will be the one place where you can go and say, all right, everything starts here, this is our base, from Wano, we go out, and stop this chaos from happening. Joy Boy is going to be the one that's going to have to stop this chaos, whether it's going to be Momonosuke and Zunisha together that starts traveling around here and ending wars and stopping the war and trying to bring everyone together. There's so much to come from this, and it all starts with Shanks. This is the whole point of the video, guys. Shanks has to go down to move this story, this story forward. And if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. There's too much logic with this one. So, hey. Believe it or not, Shanks is going down. Take care. Yo, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe here to get the latest from the channel. Also, check out some other videos that might suit your specific tastes.